People put on too much weight for all kinds of reasons. I've lost the, the fight with the devil. The devil's a Chinese. Some <laughs> eat for comfort and many are in denial. On a Saturday night, you can use half the full bottle. <sighs> you can't even know, have a treat, really. <laughs> 12 million people in the UK are now obese. You get to a point where you hate yourself that much that you start thinking nobody else can love you. If his weight is out of control, then it's not going to be here forever, is he? With lives at risk, one of the country's leading bariatric units has opened its doors to show us its battle against obesity. There's a lot of fat here. Eating junk food like crisps is like you're trading it, the trading hours of your life. It's a complex condition to treat, and bad habits can be hard to break. You did not reach your target. We need you to take us seriously. Even the most committed face seemingly overwhelming obstacles. I want my surgery. This is no fair. It's really no fair. And when success is measured in tiny steps, can this difficult journey offer hope for a better future? We want to live. We want to have a life and non existence. Bang onions, cucumber, yes, whatever else. Laura, you want oranges, don't you? Do you want apples? <laughs> In Auchinleck, Alison weighs nearly 24 stone. Oh, salt microwave popcorn. Oh. She lives with her eldest daughter Shannon and granddaughter Laura, who's three. No, I'm getting the ones that are cheaper, I'm sorry. The pizzas. Plain cheese and me. Youngest daughter Katie and her fiance Marissa live on the same street. I want salad cream. The just fat one, hen. Nope. Are you sure? Yep. Well, if you wanted to go to the chocolate aisle, you know I could. No, I'm not going down the chocolate aisle. I'm sorry, I'm drawing the lines. If I'd all the money in the world, it'd be steak. I love a nice bass steak. Love steak. I am addicted to food. Do you see yourself as fat? That's how you feel folk think of you. You don't look in the mirror because you Oof. feel fat, because you feel as if you're going to fill the mirror and that's not even half your body. Yeah. You feel yeah. that everybody is judging you like you're a fat bastard. What does normal folk bar fat at? Scotland has one of the highest levels of obesity in the world. 29% of people here have so much body fat, it's a danger to their lives. At Air Hospital, Alison is receiving help to lose weight from one of the country's leading bariatric teams. And in two months' time, she's going to be operated on by surgeon Majid Ali. The first consultation, usually I see a patient who is depressed, not confident, they feel that they are hopeless they usually have some uh, psychological backage, you know, low self-esteem or an anxiety or depression. We see a completely different patient after we provide the bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery can give hope to people. It can uh, increase the quality of their life. It can increase or add years to their life. And for some, it can save their lives. OK, Alison, do you want to come in? Yep, Please, yep. Always. The procedure Majid is going to perform will reduce the size of Alison's stomach by over 90%. But the extreme amount of fat in her body means the risks of what will be a complex operation are currently too high. Your ideal body weight is around 65, 66 mm -hmm. mark, and you're carrying like another person more than your ideal body weight yep. with you. This um, surgery carries a, uh, you know, a significant risk yeah. because of the obesity. You don't have the physiological reserve in your body to deal with any complication that can happen. Right. So that's yes. what's important for us. We need to increase yes. the safety margin for the operation from the anesthetic point of view and surgical point of view. So it's very important to lose the weight. You need to stay focused. Yep. Every day counts. Yeah, no problems. Right. But losing weight is easier said than done when fast food is just a phone call away. Oh, Hi, Hen, I was wondering if I could earn an order for delivery. What can I get you? Can I have a 14-inch bunchy box? Pan, pan, sauce and normal cola. Right, I'll not be too long. Right, thank you, Hen. Right, thank bye. You, bye. 
It's only one I've got, darling. Well, the take away the night because it's a bad day. It's that time of the month, and when I get that time of the month, don't bring me nothing because you can. I'm going to munch it. Well, what? Wait, what? I'll play a bit with your maker. Right, Mum, I've got a choice of three for you. That yeah. one. I thought that. Oh, that feels disgusting. I feel as if I've got ten ton of scrack in my face. No, hen, that's just your fault. Uh -uh. I love you. Good, good. I wish I could go into a show and pick up a size for a rock and it fit me and I look nice. It no be too tight. It no be as if I've like dragged a sack on top of my body and it's that tick that's girded on me that it can't move. I hate that because that's why you buy sizes three times bigger than what you are. I do not have the confidence to wear trousers. I bought leggings because I have to try and exercise to help burn off the weight, and I hate them. I just feel as if I am ginormous. Me and leggings. Not sure, my mum. <gasps> See that picture of myself? It's just ugh, gods. There's no that beautiful. I don't care what the thinkers say, there's no bit beautiful. Run that makeup and I'm gonna slap you. You just, <laughs> feel, Shut up. You just feel as if, how could anybody else love me when I don't? Thank you. Food here. Oh, it smells bloody good. Right. Oh, gives me oh, Charlie. Ribs. Love ribs. Can eat ribs all the time. See? Chips are good. Laura, leave some for us. Can. Uh, I want my name first. I'll give you the wings. Get the pan pan sauce is the best. Mm-hmm. Is it spicy? Is it spicy? Oh, no. I shouldn't have eaten it. I'm meant to be losing weight. I need to lose weight. But in the other one, you're going, but I'm allowed a treat. I've lost the, the fight with the devil. The devil won. The devil's a Chinese. Do you want chicken? Yum. <laughs> the rise of obesity in Scotland has led to a dramatic increase of potentially fatal illnesses. And for a National Health Service with limited resources, this means some difficult decisions must be made. We are faced with a huge influx of patients. So we offer the service to the people who will benefit the most from it. And our first target as a, as a first line for um, uh, treating this is the people who suffer from type 2 diabetes uh, and or sleep apnea. These life-threatening conditions can be cured by bariatric surgery. Is that? <laughs> In our Drossen, Stephen weighs over 26 stone. He's been married to Tina for four years. Corey is the youngest member of the family. And Stephen's also father to Tina's four children from a previous relationship. Stephen popped into my work where I was working at the time in a local kebab shop. Quite drunk. And asked for my phone number. And now I'm stuck with him. <laughs> so I'm blaming you anyway because you gave me my first kebab. You gave me, you <laughs> gave me a gave, taste for it. I never gave you your first kebab. <laughs> I may have gave you a kebab, but it certainly wasn't your first. <laughs> He's a friendly big giant, so that's what I call him, a friendly big giant. Uh, this is a wee treat this morning. So I've got some square sausage and some bacon. A couple of rolls. Stephen has type 2 diabetes, a potentially fatal disease caused by all the sugary food and drink he enjoys. Over the years, yeah, there's been a lot of treats. You can't even have a treat, really. <laughs> when I noticed myself getting bigger, I just really thought, well, I'm at a stage that I can correct it. And then before I know it, I knew it. I was uh, having to go to the doctors because I've got so many health problems now. And then that's when I realised I've got to do something. What's this? What's this daddy's got like? Oh, he 
it quick before Daddy gets it. For a minute. Diabetes affects over four and a half million people in the UK. Would you like to come Hiya. in? To get the operation that could improve his condition, Stephen must first show the team at Air Hospital that he is committed to losing weight. I'm just going to take this out now. Thank you. But for the past six months, his progress has been slow. Your BMI is 52. I would like your BMI to be in the 40s, OK, before we do an operation. Um, just to be kind of frank, mm -hmm. I had the impression that you're not taking this seriously, mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. Diabetes, as you know, is a disease that has, uh, will compromise your quality of life, is a disease associated with blindness, kidney failures, ulcers, amputations, you know, so if we get rid of this, di you know, diabetes, mm -hmm. that would be the big bonus, OK? It's a lifelong commitment. We need to make sure that we are offering this operation to somebody who is going to be a success. Yeah. But we need you to take us seriously here. Hey, Mr Ali's kind of stern. He's like a headmaster telling him getting you into trouble, but I think that's what I've needed. Um, get my head back in the game and focus. If diabetes is not under control, then when we do an operation, it can cause complications. And this complication can be serious and can be life-threatening complications. So it's important for us to control the diabetes before we go ahead with a major uh, surgery. What's your favourite dinner? It's so daddy's. Stephen must do more to improve his lifestyle. And to demonstrate this, he's been asked to lose a stone in weight before his next appointment in six weeks' time. It's like a ticking time bomb, waiting for him to lose weight. Everything's got to change. He's eating. Exercise. And if it doesn't happen, then... If he doesn't get his operation that he needs, he's not going to be here forever, is he? <laughs> Bariatric patients can face lots of different obstacles on their weight loss journey. In Kirkmichael, Stephanie weighs over 24 stone. The excessive weight she's carrying has led to chronic arthritis, a degenerative condition that causes severe inflammation and swelling in her joints. My knees, the pain's horrific. Every step you take, it's it's just bone on bone now. My body can't, you know, cope without having the pain relief. I can't cope without having the pain relief. Stephanie has been married to former soldier Stevie for almost 30 years. I think ever since we met, we just seemed to click, we just got on. I just knew I wanted to be with Stephanie. But when Stevie developed PTSD, Stephanie became his carer, and to cope with the pressure, she sought comfort in food. I don't want to live my life like this. I tried so hard to change it, and nothing works. I don't even want to think that the rest of my life's going to be like this. To alleviate her condition, Stephanie will be having bariatric surgery in six weeks' time. And for the operation to be effective, she knows she'll need Stevie's help. Uh, Most of it's me does the cooking because Stephanie finds it hard to stand. Uh -huh. Stephanie doesn't like big pieces. She likes everything chopped up. She's awkward. She's a woman. <laughs> Grandpa's made dinner. <gasps> Thank you. You're on a diet and you're watching what you're eating, and then he does dinner, and this is small. Isn't it? Hmm? What was I listening, sorry? No, you never do. That's my starter. <laughs> no, I do, I like, I like a big plate of food, I. It's nice, thank you. Stevie's lack of portion control will make it harder to keep temptation at bay. It seems there's always food around, and even a simple family gathering involves a feast. 
when you look at that, you just want a bit of everything. One sausage roll wouldn't be enough, so we just, I don't have them at all. But it's just a case of working it out what you are allowed and what you're not. But while Stephanie is determined to lose weight, she's not convinced Stevie is being fully supportive. I need you to be on side and you want me to do this. You tell me, what's your worries about it? I think the biggest worry is you snuff it. Well, Mr Ali's not going to get surgery if there's any risk at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is the first time in all our life together that I've actually put myself first. Because I think you're being selfish and you're being... No, I do, because you're in a mood constantly. Why? Hey, listen, in the day, it's up to you. You. It's you not, it's up to us. Table. It's up to us. That's why we discuss everything. If you were wanting this, would I support you? No. <laughs> aye, aye. So when you got a Chinese or an Indian, would you need to split one? Don't know. It's a week since Alison was at Air Hospital and she's determined to lose weight in the run-up to surgery. You keep on here then, Mass. You fat me, dog. <laughs> so we'd see if you run. <laughs> Don't even thank you. Shattered. Five minutes walk. For a whole six calories. Six calories, it's not even a crisp. You're sat eating monster munchies. They're pickled in. Well, I'm on my bike too. In the big strides. This is for my bingo bangs. <laughs> <sighs> We're changing to my good hat. <laughs> and you taste Laura. <sighs> 23 and 9 calories. Shattered. Breathe, breathe, breathe. I want perky boobies. One's it sitting tied up the bike. I had a pack of chuggies since I was about 10. Can just get mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> While Alison's having fun, her surgeon, Majid Ali, oh, yeah. needs to conduct an endoscopic investigation to see if there's anything that could jeopardise her weight loss surgery. We need to make sure that it's a healthy stomach before we mm -hmm. close it off. All right. There's just a throat uh -huh. spray that will make your throat numb a bit. Well done. Oh, that's disgusting. And if you can go on your side over to this side, right? Yep. Okay, this slide in the back of your tongue, that's excellent. Well done. Well said. You need to breathe for me, though. Give me a nice, steady breath. Excellent. Doing well, doing well. Just try to relax. Okay. Excellent. So just looking at your stomach is okay, looks healthy to me. Yeah, very tiny, hiatus hernia. This is as far as we can go. We're just coming out slowly, okay? All right, well done. That's it. <sighs> Alison's stomach looked healthy. Her initial BMI was above 64. Kg per meter square, which is a very, very high BMI. Uh, but she's done well by losing weight before surgery, and that will increase the safety margin a bit. I'm hoping that she will continue to lose weight before her operation. But what I've seen today in the endoscopy is very encouraging. Alison is making good progress. Right. And what's more, there's a wedding to look forward to. Katie and Marissa are getting married in a fortnight's time. I've already told her it's just a bit of paper, but I'll still marry her. But we're doing it, not saying it. Yeah. <laughs> Me, Kaylee, Lindsay. Now we need the two mums. My mum has always struggled with weight for a really young age. She's her biggest worry is that she's not going to be here for Laura. See Laura grow up, be able to do anything with Laura. She's just going to be stuck. She'd help anybody if she could. She's basically helped us pay for this whole wedding. Aye. Aye. She's got back hair. She's a little ray of sunshine. Yeah. Right, hurry up there, Twirl. Pick it up and Twirl. Whee! 
In the weeks just before surgery, Alison must begin an extreme diet that will force her body to burn off even more fat. <laughs> Around 2,000 calories a day should be the norm for Alison. The plan now is to restrict her to less than half that. So now I just need to do your calorie and nutritional goals. Yes, which is 800. How much does that give me for my Dana? 420. Oh, you... well, what can I have for 420 calories? Well, I could have the lettuce with the lettuce of side, with the lettuce and the lettuce and the lettuce, because that's only five calories. I'll look my freezer and I'll maybe have my vegetable rice. Is Laura wanting pizza? These are no bad. Steam bags of cauliflower rice, quinoa and lentils. Cause it's get the rice, I'll be higher calories. Yep, 90 calories because of added rice. Rice is carbohydrates. <sighs> carbohydrates are high in calorie. So we don't want that. Just got in the bag, so. It looks like shit. <laughs> Take that through because I've got some chicken out of that. Ooh, chicken. Mm. Ah, 57 calories in that one. That's the one I'm having for my dinner. 100 grams of chicken is 120 calories. <laughs> And if I put that with my steamed bag of rainbow riced vegetables, it's only 230 calories. Yes, I got a slice of toast later on. Oh, thank heaven for that. Because my stomach will need to slice of toast later on. Mind you, if I add some sauce to that, then that puts it back up again. Mmm, to add sauce to the chicken. Mm. I'll think. 100. I see. You are joking! Oh, I starved today. Eat them. Right, so if you give me one tablespoon, mm -hmm. 46 calories, Katie. So that's a lot better, hen. You can't go over the 800. You can go under it, but you cannot go over it. No, no chance. You've 142 grams in yours, hen. Oh, OK, and I'm a fat bastard. I know, but never mind, I love you. Thank you. Right, when you go, when you sit up, banana. Oh, num, 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 num. It's actually not too bad. You know. And there goes another 10 grams of my chicken. Three weeks, 800 calories is going to be hard. I think at the end of the three weeks, I'll be ready for each and somebody's leg off. It might be hard to swallow, but the Spartan diet will make the operation not just safer, but easier to perform. But some bariatric patients are involved in an even bigger struggle. In Annan on the Solway Firth, Teresa weighs over 25 stone. There's that, there's that weight that my nemesis Never a happy, never a happy number. <laughs> Four pregnancies and the breakdown of a troubled relationship all caused Teresa's weight to soar. And despite the help of the NHS for the past 10 years, she has failed to overcome her fraught relationship with food. I have to get all this fat off. It's because there's fat in that bit, it's just, it's not going in. I'm so obsessed, you know, I have to make sure every ounce of fat is off everything. I have to weigh everything. I have to, even this outfit down to the exact amount. So, <laughs> and that's 261 and that bothers me. And that's insane. That says 260 now. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> Teresa's extreme weight means she's now virtually housebound on the ground floor. <sighs> Every little movement hurts. It's just impossible. Oh, you'd think it would be easy to get a wheelchair and pull the table in front of it, but it's it's not always that easy. And by the time I get there, I need a break. But I love doing this. I 
keeps my mind busy. Otherwise, you're just sitting, staring at the four walls. When you have an eating problem, it, it all revolves around food. And I go from one extreme from eating lots to eating so little. And it's such a rigid plan that it's completely unsustainable, which is why I fail. It, it's a vicious circle that's really hard to break. It's really, really hard to break. But this could be about to change. Oh, I'm so excited. I've never been so excited to leave the house. Because NHS Dumfries and Galloway doesn't have a surgical weight loss service of its own, Teresa has been transferred to the care of the bariatric unit at Air Hospital. Oh, I'm so happy. Bariatric surgery could help give Teresa the help she needs to lose weight. But there's a problem. The extreme amount of fat in her body makes it unsafe to administer a general anaesthetic. So, as a bridge to surgery, a gastric balloon is about to be placed in her stomach. So this is the balloon. It comes rolled up like a cigar size. It's the smallest, quite floppy, actually, it's quite soft. This is what we put inside the balloon, around 500 of normal saline. Teresa struggled with, with her weight uh, despite the help from the team in Dumfries and Galloway. I can understand why, because uh, she obviously uses a, a wheelchair and her mobility is very restricted. So that's why we are inserting the balloon here to help her to lose weight and speed up the process a bit. Good morning. Morning. Teresa, how are you? I'm good. You OK? Yeah, thank good. you. Right. Um, the procedure is not painful, it's just uncomfortable. The balloon can give you a feeling of nausea that can last for 72 hours. OK. All right? Yep. What's that you're doing? It's adult colouring. Nice. It's... Magic jungle. Takes okay. away all the stress. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll see you in a minute. OK, okay. thank you. Later. Breathe in and out and just relax. Try to go somewhere nice. Well done, Tess. And big swallow now. Big swallow, that's it. Big swallow. You've done it. That's it. Absolutely fantastic. Right, just try not to reject it. OK. Try to dismiss that feeling that you want to be sick. Okay. Nice deep breath for your nose. Come on. So we start filling the nice balloon now with the, uh, with the fluids. It's fully inflated, and the balloon is in a, in a good place. Well done, Teresa. That's it. Excellent job. Well done. You OK? Yeah. Excellent. Well done. If all goes well, the balloon could help Teresa to lose as much as three stone over the next six months. It's like a lick of the spoon. It's, it's all I can take at one time. I just want to get home and get on with it now and just start watching those pounds come off. I can't, I'm so excited for the future. Everything's going to change. This is the usual for a Saturday night. Saturday night treat, chill out, relax. It's very nice. Stephen has been asked to lose weight before his next appointment with the bariatric team, but weekends are a stumbling block. So this is Stephen's with no sugar, no calories. So he thinks it's okay. But then on the other hand, he has a full bottle of this. So as far as he's concerned, that's OK. Tina and I, we don't talk about the, about the weight much. What do you think that is? I don't know, because I, I do get embarrassed about it a wee bit. Um, obviously, I don't like being this size, but 
If we talked about it, I think it would just get us worked up. I think, I don't know. I'm not really the kind of person that likes to talk about my things that's going on with myself. I'd just always been like that. Hopefully get the surgery within the next few months. And then it's just a, the start of another journey. Oh, are you getting tired? <laughs> oh, my God! Yeah, oh, my boy. Did you do a wee pump? I'm constantly having a go at him. Every time he tries to steal something off the kids' dinners or something, I'm shouting at him all the time. And I think it's working. Sometimes. <laughs> he needs to do some more exercise, but he's not really been doing as much as he should be just now because... He's so out of breath all the time, but hopefully we'll get through it together. Do you want to sit in one of the boulders? But to get the surgery that could help him lose weight and cure his diabetes, Stephen will have to do more. You're going to get a dirty bum. I'm going to get a dirty bum. <laughs> Uh, when I'm drinking, you just don't think about it. There's always got to be a munchie at the end of it. And it's always the wrong things. When you're drunk, you don't say, oh, I could murder a cabbage. <laughs> it's always a kebab or a pizza. Chips and cheese. Possibly all three. <laughs> Abigail, slow down. You're too fast. <laughs> Keeps me on my toes, that's for sure. Unlike Stephen, Stephanie has a date for her surgery, and every pound she can lose will help reduce the risks of what is going to be a major operation in four weeks' time. I'm not going to lose any weight or you know, tone anything up unless I try and I exercise. So I'm going to have to overcome people being here and people seeing me in a swimsuit. And I will get in, because it's a new me. I'm going to get in. As Stephanie takes a bold step, Stevie waits in the car park. And while Stephanie's determined to lose weight, she's still worried he isn't ready to embrace the change surgery could bring. Bye. A lunch date with Dr Kimberly is a good opportunity to consider what the future holds. Hello. Hi, kid. How are you? <laughs> Hi, baby. Hello. Yay. Started making this soup, so... <laughs> good, good. I mean, your dad seems to think that well, he's told me, he said that if I lose the weight, I'm going to start going out and I'm going to leave him. But why would I? I think when you do lose the weight, you'll be more independent and Dad's a bit scared that he's going to lose being... Needed. Like, yeah. I want the two of us to do it together. I want him to be healthy as well. And I keep trying to say to him, it's going to be a different life altogether. He wouldn't cope no, he wouldn't without he. you at all. But you can't kind of think on the negatives. You know what the negatives are. I know that he'll help me all he can, but I know he's going to hate the fact that the more he's helping me, the more independent I'm becoming, and the less I'm needing him. With two weeks to go before Alison's surgery, Katie and Marissa's big day has arrived. It's a welcome break from counting calories. One step of the day, I'm just, I'm hanging on with a thread. Really, I'm hanging on with a thread. You always like to dress up, you and Laura. I've got tricky stuff today, yes. Well, they're up there, they ain't budging. They're stuck on my glue. These rings have been given and received, as you promised to love each other today tomorrow and forever. It is now with very great pleasure I can declare that you are now joined in marriage.
It's like we're giving off space then. <laughs> hey, the ass is getting weird. <laughs> Going molasses. <laughs> Stevie, he wasn't coping very well. I'll just bring him down here, just let him fish. Even if he can't catch nothing, I'll let him fish. There are now just three weeks to go before Stephanie has surgery. This operation's going to change everything. I feel it's going to change it for the better in the fact that I'm going to be able to take part instead of just watching. I would love to walk along the beach and the silly wee normal things in life. I want it so much. Thank you. But just when all seems well, there's bad news. Stephanie's GP thinks she might have cancer. The bariatric team have been informed and Stephanie is now expecting a call to hear what the impact will be. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Stephanie. How are you doing? <laughs> fine, fine. Uh, Mr Ali, uh, wants to postpone your operation? Because of the information that we've got, no, no. We can't put you at risk. Oh, shit. No, I'm not doing this. You better phone back. Do you know what? I wish I'd have just lied and not told anybody anything and just left it because there's nothing wrong. I want my surgery. You know, everything is all resting uh -huh. on this. Uh -huh. It's just, it's no fair. It's really no fair. I know you're upset. Uh, I can hear that. But from our position, there's just nothing we can do then. Mm. We are just going to have to wait until we know that there's nothing wrong. All right. So, all right. Right, thanks, Kevin. Bye. Yeah. Don't. Just don't. That's no fear. A week later, Stephanie arrives for a gynaecological investigation at Crosshouse Hospital in Kilmarnock. <laughs> Postmenopausal women who are also obese are at a greater risk of developing cancer of the womb or uterus. You ever walked along the beach? You see this Pacific shell, there's millions of shells, but you see this one Pacific shell, and you pick that Pacific shell up and it's just perfect. Well, that's how I see me and Stephanie. I find the shell, yeah. It's hard to explain, but you know what I mean? It's... Let's hope everything goes okay today. I'm sure it will. If it's not, well, we'll need to deal with it. It's three hours before Stephanie is out and can tell Stevie what her gynaecologist has found. Oh, no, it wasn't good. Right. It wasn't good. Basically, the lining in my womb is thick, which means it's no good. And I need to get biopsies done and everything yeah. now. That's what's going to happen, that's going to happen. So, that's it. Jump the car. OK. You all right? as fine as you can be. Stephanie will be having further tests for uterine cancer in a week's time. At Air Hospital, it's almost a month since a gastric balloon was placed in Teresa's stomach and she's back in the care of the bariatric team. How are you? Feeling rough. Right, what happened? It's just constant sickness and right. cramping all the time. And then You've got a cramp as well? It's, it's nausea. And right. 
Let's just have a seat here next to you. The ones that brought up a lot of volume then, frothy yellow, That's okay. yellow key stuff. Right. We'll give you uh, some fluid um, hydration, although you, you look very well hydrated. <laughs> Right. I try and breathe it away as much as I can, but sometimes it just is too much. Okay. So what we'll do is basically we'll give you something to, to strong medication, probably stronger than what you've been given. And if that works, that's fine. If it doesn't, then by Monday I will remove the balloon. I'd rather not, to be honest. I'm on call this weekend, so I'll be seeing you every morning. Yeah. And by Monday we'll reach a decision. Okay. Teresa is, is uh, struggling a bit with the balloon. You know, and um, that can happen sometimes. It's not really a pleasant procedure to have, uh, but sometimes it's a must. I'm sure she'll be okay. We will help her to get there. I don't want the balloon out. Mr. Ali's very optimistic that it'll settle. I hope he's right. I really don't want to. I don't want to have to go through all this for nothing. With the team's help, Teresa battles on. Oh, that's hard work. And despite her discomfort, it seems a balloon is doing some good. You can hold on this if you want. 148, isn't it? Yeah. Over a stone since the balloon. Wow. That is good. But three days later, Teresa is still struggling and a difficult decision is made. Well, today I'm getting the balloon out probably in the next half hour, and I'm ready to get out. But the good news is that I go on and get my bypass surgery in about 10 weeks. So that's good news. But I've learned that I can cope with things without turning into food. So I think the lessons that I've learned in these last few weeks are gonna be good for the next 10 weeks pre-surgery. <laughs> it's been a long ordeal, but the weight Teresa has lost since the balloon was placed in her stomach a month ago has reduced the risks of surgery to a safe level. <laughs> Today lunch is a nice pole and a nice lolly. And that'll do me. For the past few weeks, Stephen has been taking an unconventional approach to losing weight. So have you been weighing yourself? Um, I've, I've not actually been weighing myself with scales. I've been measuring myself with what I wear. I've got my shorts are tied to a certain, <laughs> a certain size, so I've been using that. It does more house work, but with more calories. I've been great. I'm feeling really good. You've not got as much chins anymore. Your chins aren't so big. Oh, I just get one big one. Yeah. It wasn't as big before they moved in here. I feel partly to blame for it. Oh, it's me. It's to blame, not you. It's taken a long time, but Stephen has lost over six kilos. And for the bariatric team, reaching this target is proof that he's ready for surgery. Stephen, he's on track. I think he's making the changes since the last time we've seen him, uh, and he's losing uh, some weight. Surgery is only part of this journey. A lot of things has to change. They, they have to adopt uh, exercise and uh, healthy eating and avoid drinking excess amount of alcohol. This is a new start. Tina just wants me to be alive for longer, uh, happy and healthy. Get the operation, it will hopefully give me a longer life, longer time with the kids, longer time with Tina. Wife and wins. Bariatric surgery isn't a quick fix. 
But for patients who've proven their commitment and got their weight to a safe level, this operation can be the catalyst for a better life. I need this operation because I'm coming up in 52. My weight was creeping up by staying every year and it was the storm. If I don't go through the operation and I could keep on gaining weight the way I was going, it would be death, only way. I thought it was from the cabbage. Do I sort of cabbage tea? It's life threatening for me and it's a life changer for my grand wane, it's life changer for my wanes. It's simple as, because if I'm not here, who watches our them? Who keeps an eye on them? Seven months after starting her bariatric journey, Alison arrives at Air Hospital for surgery. The NHS provides different kinds of surgical weight loss procedures. Surgeon Majid Ali thinks a gastric bypass is the best option for Alison and will help her to lose the most weight. But it will be a very complex operation, made even harder by the extreme amount of fat still in Alison's body. I have to work my way through this fat. This is going to be challenging procedure. We are looking for a specific uh, piece of bowel that we need to bring um, up so we can join it to the stomach. You can see it's a very thick fat. This fat is inside is like years of uh, eating junk food. In my opinion, you know, uh, eating junk food like crisps is like you are trading it, uh, trading hours of your life. You need to ask yourself, is it worth it? Thank you. In the first stage of the bypass, Majid will be reducing the size of Alison's stomach by over 90%. Now we are creating a pouch, like a stomach pouch. We are cutting the stomach at the moment. Suction, please. This is the new stomach, okay? So that's it, very tiny. Next, Majid needs to bypass a quarter of Alison's intestines. So we are going to bypass a meter and a half of the small bowel where the food uh, go through. So this is the area we are bypassing here. So I'm not good at math, so the people help me to count. One, two, two four, five. Approximately seven and a half meters long, the intestines are where our bodies absorb nutrients and vitamins from the food we eat. That's a meter. We are taking away uh, or excluding uh, a good part of the stomach and then bypassing the area where the food will get absorbed. The patient is not able to eat a lot, but also what they eat, they cannot absorb all of it. Twenty-four hours later, Alison is recovering well. Morning, Alison. Morning, Dr. Ali. How are you? Not bad. Getting there. Bowel opened? No, not yet. Are you bussing wind? Plenty wind. Good. Right. So, the operation went um, as expected. Yep. Fine. Hopefully, this is a new chapter in your life and hopefully you will work with the operation oh, yes. and, and things will change, I'm sure. Yep. But you've done extremely well. Yes. OK. All right. Thank you. If Alison continues to eat well, and takes plenty of exercise, she will lose a considerable amount of weight. But it could be months before she sees a real difference. I don't think of me as a thin person. I cannot see that at all now. It's trying to build up my confidence now to be able to do things as I could do in weight, to do the things that I didn't do before because I was too fat to do them. 
and it's like a full change of my lifestyle. I did this for me, for me to be healthy, for me to live longer. Ken. It's been three weeks since Stephanie was tested for uterine cancer. Hello? Right, and... Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. They're all benign. Everything's benign. Don't say that. <laughs> I can't even tell you, because she's just told me. She says she wants me in the three months to get the rest of the but what she's taken away is benign. OK. I'm safe to go ahead with my bariatric surgery. Absolutely in bits. Good news for a wee change. I think that's the first bit of the roller coaster that's actually been up the way, isn't it? I've even not got a stick. Come here. I just wanted to make sure you were OK. Two weeks after being declared cancer-free, Stephanie arrives at Air Hospital to undergo bariatric surgery. Right, give me a kiss. Okay. Go and get yourself settled. Yeah, right. there's nothing you can do for me. No, I'm just going to get an old book to have a part. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're fine. Majid has decided a gastric sleeve is the best option for Stephanie. She's anemic and needs to absorb all the iron from the food she eats. A gastric sleeve will allow Stephanie's body to do this because it doesn't involve bypassing any part of her intestines. So this is the stomach, okay? We are making the Stephanie uh, stomach like a tube, like a sleeve of an, an arm. The whole idea of sleeve is try to reduce the, the capacity of the stomach that hopefully will reduce the amount of the patient is able uh, to eat. So we are working our way from the bottom of the stomach to the top of the stomach. Using a special device that simultaneously cuts and staples, Majid gradually divides Stephanie's stomach in two. This is the sleeve, right? And um, this is the stable line, OK? These are like staples. These things will dissolve later on. The larger of the two sections is now redundant and must be removed. OK, so it's like delivering a baby now. 85% of the stomach here is taken out. Operating is a drastic measure. So in my mind, you know, obesity should be prevented is better than like trying to treat it. That's the stomach. It's been a long six hours. This hope it's worth it in the long run. Later that day, Stephanie is out of theatre and able to receive visitors. We will not leave her alone, obviously. This is a, a teamwork. So um, she will be uh, followed up regularly by my bariatric team. I will see her in six months' time to make sure that the progress is good and give her support. I think in, in the first six months, we will see more than 50% of her excess weight uh, has been lost. Last year, just 192 bariatric operations were performed by NHS Scotland. It's not the only way to treat obesity, but with over a million Scots now obese, it can be a critical turning point in many people's lives.
like that jacket. I like that shirt too. I don't know about the sleeves. In Glasgow, Alison is shopping for new clothes. Walk, that is nice, but that is nice. No, but, no, but thinking of a pair of no. trousers. No, mother. Nothing baggy at all. No, I hate you. Why no nothing baggy? Because you're losing weight. It's time to show it off. <gasps> Ooh. It's give me bows on it. Since becoming a bariatric patient 10 months ago, Alison has lost over eight and a half stone. I'm sitting just in the morning at 18 7. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a 16. Mmm. Mmm. Hey. That's a try on. Right, hold that. Yeah. She's doing amazing. My mum is doing amazing. I mean, to even think of putting herself into a pair of trousers is a bit can you, scary. <laughs> That looks all right, but it's when you go like that and you go, oh, God, I've got a bob in the front. I've got a sexy ass. You do look fabulous. You do. I still feel fat. But then when you come out and you try something more different and you go, wow, I didn't think I would do that. I didn't think I would look like that. And it's, it's good. I feel happier and healthier. The happier still could try to catch up and the healthier. The one thing that the surgery just gave me is freedom. I don't feel everybody, when I go out, everybody just looks at me and goes, fat bastard. There you are. It's, it's, she might be, well, that's a big lassie. But she's not so fat as she used to be. You look good in jeans, Mum. I, they're not bad, I suppose. They're nice. Yep. Yeah. I'm feeling sexy. Big high heels on now and big bits up to top of my own. Just imagine you with high heels on shaking your ass. Shake my booty. Shake my mm -hmm. booty. Come with me. Ha ha ha. Definitely shedding the fat. I feel like I knew me. We're always close anyway, but yeah, your belly's not as big. <laughs> so you can get closer. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs>